So we are switching to the main move after d4, e takes d4. As we saw, short castle, knight takes e4 is very comfortable for black. Here white goes e5, attacks uh, the knight. Black uh, has few reasonable uh, possibilities here, such are knight g4, knight e4. But I do believe that the most common d5 is also the most logical continuation. Why should uh, black waste the tempo for moving the knight when we can just unblock the bishop with a tempo and attack uh, the bishop c4? Since e takes f6, d takes c4 is just bad for white. White has to retreat the bishop and bishop d4 is of course the most logical one. So the knight on c6 is pinned and uh, it can be followed by knight takes d4, knight e4. Knight e4 is also not the only way to retreat the knight because knight d7 was successfully played by many strong players. But in my opinion, uh, there is no reason for deviating from this move. Knight takes d4. Uh, there is nothing better for white instead because after short castle, black can at least play bishop c5 and then knight takes d4 short castle is in transposition to our main line. So knight takes d4, bishop c5. Bishop d7 is actually a very common alternative and I think it's uh, also the top choice. But I think that black can afford uh, leaving the knight on c6 unprotected because all the complications that are connected with the capture on c6 favor black. But we will of course make sure that, uh, that white cannot take on c6. So after bishop c5, White can play uh, bishop e3, knight takes c6, or short castle. Of course, we should start with knight takes c6, because it looks like black uh, loses material. Bishop takes f2, check king f1, b takes c6, bishop takes c6. All those moves are forced and do not require much explanation. King f8. Now... Uh, it's obvious that bishop takes a8 is impossible because of bishop a6 check, but we should not uh, end the line here because white can try c4 or queen d3 covering the a6 uh, f1 diagonal. c4 is actually just bad because then black goes queen h4 and it turns out that um, black has now the decisive attack. Uh, there are at least three pieces that uh, put strong pressure on white's king and it's enough. After bishop takes d5, bishop g4, black joins another piece in the attack. Queen d3, bishop b6. Now queen f2 is a very strong uh, threat and bishop e3 is met by knight g3 check, followed by queen h1 and white's position is collapsed. So queen d3 is, uh, is the best here, but after bishop f5, uh, the threat of knight g3 check forces white to move the queen again. Of course, it costs white uh, important tempi. And now bishop d7. This is actually a very important tactical resource that allows black to maintain the initiative. Uh, obviously, white cannot check on d5 or uh, a8 because of bishop d5. So white has to go e6. Bishop takes e6. Bishop takes a8. Now this move is possible because black's bishop is on e6. However, after queen takes a8, we can see that black has more than enough uh, compensation for an exchange. Uh, except of uh, pawn, black also has the superior piece coordination and the knight on e4 plays the key role in it. So knight takes e6 is actually a dubious try and uh, white can play bishop e3 or short castle. So after short castle, black plays uh, short castle and again white can try to check the pawn uh, with bishop takes c6 or knight takes c6. Knight takes c6 uh, is just bad here because b takes c6, bishop takes c6 is refuted by bishop a6 and then uh, after bishop takes a8, bishop takes f1, queen takes, uh, king takes f1, excuse me. There is no need for black to waste the tempo for queen takes e8, but much stronger is queen h4 with a powerful initiative. White's uh, lack of development starts to tell now. 
Queen takes d5 is another try in this position, but then bishop takes f1, queen takes e4, and now uh, bishop b5 is a very powerful move. Queen d1 mate is threatening, and uh, it means that now black can exchange the light squared bishop, and after bishop d4, white still has a symbolic material advantage, but actually white is in big trouble here, because uh, black black's pieces start to dominate over the board, especially the centralized bishop on d4. So, as we saw, knight takes c6 uh, is dubious here. Therefore, uh, the more reasonable capture is bishop takes c6, b takes c6, and now uh, the best white can do is bishop e3. However, let's make sure that uh, white still cannot check the pawn. In case of knight check c6, now black can play queen d7, knight d4. It looks like white's position is stable enough, but it is not true. Uh, black's bishop pair uh, is a very important factor in this position, and uh, black can claim uh, its effect by playing queen e7, bishop f4, and now f6, a well-timed break. Uh, white's queenside pieces are undeveloped now, and it's very hard to uh, defend e5, and black is aiming to open the f-file and increase the pressure on f2. The best white can try is e6, bishop takes e6, c3, bishop f7. This position occurred in the grandmaster game Roger Spadlovich more than 30 years ago, and I think that black has the superior chances here because of the bishop pair. Also, uh, instead of knight check c6, white can try f3. And now, uh, if black moves the knight, then we can say that this decision is more or less justified for white because the knight on e4 was very strong. But black can actually exploit the weakening of a7 g1 diagonal with f6, which is a great uh, tactical resource f takes e4, f takes e5, and then uh, black simply uh, regains the missing pins and obtain the much better position. So finally the best white can play is bishop e3, and now uh, knight takes c6 becomes a more se serious threat in this position, because it can be followed by the bishop's trade. So uh, that's why I like queen e8, not only defending the pawn on c6, but also keeping an eye on the e5 pawn. And uh, another strong point of it is that uh, sometimes the bishop on e3 is not de uh, defended enough. It can be seen in the following case. After f3, black plays knight f6, and uh, the vulnerable position of bishop e3 uh, enables black to seize the initiative. Here, white has nothing better than f4. And then knight g4 attacking the bishop, queen d2, f6, and white was already on the verge of collapse. Most likely uh, white will lose material here. So that's why after queen e8, uh, the best white can play is knight d2. Now bishop b6, which is not the most common move uh, in the position, but I find it very sensible because the bishop on c5 was unstable. And we should not fear of uh, exchange on e4. Although uh, now the e4 pawn uh, is somewhat exposed, but I think that uh, it's not easy for white to exploit that, because the e5 pawn is hanging and uh, white's knight on d4 is somewhat unstable. So what do I mean? Now queen h5, which is practically the only way to defend the pawn, meets f5. And uh, this is another good point of uh, playing queen e8. Queen takes e8, rook takes e8. And now we can see that black doesn't have any problems, because uh, if white checks on c6, black will attack this knight and check on e5. And black even has the superior pawn structure because of the pawn on e4, that makes uh, white's position somewhat crowned. So this was... Uh, short castle. Now we switch to the main move, bishop e3. 
short castle. And now the critical move is knight takes c6. Of course, uh, white can play bishop takes c6, b takes c6 and short castle, but then it will transpose into above mentioned lines because black plays the important queen e8 here. So after short castle, white plays knight takes c6, and I think that it is the most critical line of uh, fifth move e5 in general. In fact, it was played many times by English strongmaster Gawain Jones and some other players. B takes c6, bishop takes c c5, knight takes c5. So black's knight uh, leaves the center and achieves an achievement for white. And bishop takes c6. I think that this time uh, black's uh, compensation is not that obvious as in the previous uh, cases. However, black still has some lead in development. And after b8, the good thing is that uh, the pawn on b2 is also hanging. So in this position, white can grab another pawn with queen takes d5 or simply castle. In case of short castle, black plays bishop a6, which is not uh, the only good move here, but I, I think that it is uh, the most challenging from white's point of view because he has to waste the tempo for rook e1. Rook takes b2, and now after queen takes d5, black simply regains the pawn, rook takes c2, knight a3, rook c3, white has nothing better than trading queens, and uh, black has a very comfortable play here, the knight on a3 is uh, quite awkward, and I think that black has at least full compensation for uh, some structural problems here. So, uh, after rook b8, the main try is queen takes d5. And this time I prefer not to trade queens. I like queen e7, because I think that the queen on d5 is vulnerable and black can attack it by means of rook d8 or bishop e6. Short castle rook takes b2. Now uh, white can play knight c3, which is of course the most natural move, or knight a3, the materialistic approach. Uh, trying to keep the extra pawn. In case of knight a3, now black uh, gains another tempo with bishop e6, queen d4, and rook b6. It makes sense to retreat the rook on b6 because now black uh, attacks the bishop. Now if bishop f3, then knight d7 attacking the knight on a3. Here I see nothing uh, better for white than queen c3, and after queen b4, black uh, has an excellent uh, play. The pawn on e5 uh, might be lost uh, in the long run here. Also the pawn on a2 uh, is a cause of worries uh, for white, and black's heavy pieces are much more active. And if after rook b6 white chooses to retreat the bishop on b5, then black can go knight d7, and after rook fd1, knight takes e5. Of course, uh, the immediate queen takes a3 is met by bishop takes d7, so that's why we move our knight and uh, liquidate the central pawn. And here, uh, only white can face any problems. So that's why after rook takes b2, uh, knight c3 looks like the most uh, dangerous move uh, for us, because white's idea is to retreat the queen and then place his knight in the center, so we should be aware of it. Rook takes c2, queen d4. Now, knight d5 is a very serious threat to do with it, but uh, it's our turn, so we can play knight e6, queen d3, rook b2, and now knight d5 is not as dangerous as before, because our uh, piece coordination is much better. In fact, uh, we have no hanging pieces like uh, like before. After knight d5, we can play queen c5, attacking the bishop on c6. Actually, not attacking the bishop because queen takes c6 is impossible because of knight e7 check, but uh, the, the bishop on c6 still uh, feels very unsafe. Rook a c1, queen d4, black reasonably insists on the trade. Moreover, in case of queen takes d4, knight takes d4, 
black uh, checks over the initiative because the knight on d4 is just a monster and knight e2 check is threatening. Queen f5. We have been following the game uh, Lou Milikov that was played few months ago. And here I suggest the following improvement over uh, Yoav's play. In my opinion, Black should have played the prophylactic King H8, avoiding any potential forks with Knight E7. And if Rook C D1, then Rook D2. Uh, I like this concept. Black exchanges the only active Rook of opponent, since the Rook on F1 is quite passive here. Rook takes D2. It has to be mentioned that knight f6 doesn't work here in, in view of knight g5. Now if queen takes g5 then we check on d1 and if rook takes d2 then queen takes d2. And then black is firmly in the control because uh, the knight is protected. And if after rook takes d2, queen takes d2, it leads to uh, an interesting position which is about balanced. Uh, obviously white doesn't have any attack any longer. And uh, the rook on f1 has no good prospects. I cannot say that uh, black's position is perfect either here. The bishop is still on c8. But I think that uh, in the long run black has uh, good chances for seizing the initiative. Because black can next play bishop a6, maybe rook b8 at some point. Also the pawn on a2 uh, can be taken. So the chances are uh, much well here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next chapters.